all the pages have been released literally after I posted the video, I see that Brian Enton from news nation posted the pages. The first page is like really, really hard to read like this middle part here. I'm going to try to get through some of it and I might just have to say, you guys can try to figure it out for yourselves, but it says, Gabby, I wish I was right at your side. I wish I could be talking to you right now. I'd be going through every morning we made getting even more exotic for the future. But when last put, I can't even read this future. I can't without you. I can't be without you. I'm lost every day. We could have spent together every holiday. I'll never get to play with Catherine again never go hiking with tj i think it says i loved you more than anything i can't bear to look at our photos to recall great times because it is why i cannot go on when i close my eyes i will think of laying on the roof of the van falling asleep to the stars can i read that together something at the crystal geyser I will always love you. This is page two, and this is easier to read. It says, if you were reading Gab's journal, looking at photos from our life together, flipping through old cards, you wouldn't want to live a day without her. Knowing that every day you'll wake up without her, you wouldn't want to wake up. I'm sorry to everyone this will affect. Gabby was the love of my life. This uh, sentence here, I can't make it out. Maybe you guys can comment down below. This is page two. It says, but I know something by many. Uh, I'm so very sorry to her family because I love them. I console her younger siblings, my best of friends. I'm sorry to my family. This is a shock to them as well. A terrible grief. So we're on to page three now. And page three is like really interesting. It's his story of claiming about when she was crossed, something happened to get to the creek and you he heard her scream. It's odd. And so bear with me while I try to read this for you guys. Okay. It says, they loved as much, if not more than me, a new daughter to my mother an aunt to my nephew. Please do not make this harder for them. This occurred as an unexpected tragedy, rushing back to our car, trying to cross the streams of spread Creek before it got too dark to see too cold. I hear a splash and a scream. I could hardly see. I couldn't find her for a moment. Shouted her name. I found her breathing. I'm not sure what this says. Harshly, or maybe you guys can comment down below. Gasping my, and then it's like smudged out something cold. Can't really see the rest. The bleeding, I think it says, or the something hot national parks. This is page four, and it kind of continues with the story. It says in Utah, so he's talking about where they were at. The temperatures had dropped to freezing and she was soaking wet. I carried her as far as I could down the stream towards the car, stumbling, exhausted, in shock when my, it's like crossed out blank, and I knew I couldn't safely carry her. I started a fire and spooned her as close to the heat. She was so thin, had already been freezing too long. I couldn't at the time realize that I should have started a fire first, but I wanted her out of the cold back to the car from where I started the fire. I had no idea how far the car might be, only knew it was across the creek. When I pulled Gabby out of the water, she couldn't tell me what hurt. She had a small bruise on her forehead that eventually got larger. Her feet hurt, her wrist hurt, but she was freezing, shaking violently while carrying her. She continually made sounds of pain Laying next to her, she said little, lapsing between violent shakes, gasping in pain, begging for an end to her pain. She would fall asleep and I would shake her awake, fearing she shouldn't close her eyes in case if she had a concussion. This is page six, which we read as page eight on the other video because Fox, I don't know it said it was page eight, but on Brian Enton's post, this is page six and it says she would wake in pain, start her whole painful cycle again. While furious that I was the one waking her, she wouldn't let me try to cross maybe the creek, thought like that the fire would go out in her sleep and she'd freeze. I don't know the extent of Gabby's injuries, only that she was in extreme pain. I ended her life. 
I thought it was merciful. That is what she wanted. But I see now all the mistakes I made. I panicked. I think that says I was in shock. But from the moment I decided to take away her pain, I knew I wouldn't go on without her. This is page seven. There's a few that I couldn't really read or understand, uh, but you get the gist of it. You can comment down below too if there's a word that you want to plug in. I rushed home to spend my time I had left with my family. I wanted to drive north and let James or I'm not sure what that says kill me, but I wouldn't want them to spend time in jail over my mistake, even though I'm sure they would have. I'm not sure what that says. I'm ending my life not because of fear of punishment, but rather because I cannot stand to live another day without her. I've lost our whole future together. Every moment we could have. I'm not sure what that says there either. I'm sorry for everyone's loss. Please do not make life harder for my family. They lost a son and a daughter, the most beautiful girl on the earth. Gabby, I'm sorry. And finally to the last page, it says, and this is page eight, I have killed myself by this creek in the hopes that animals may tear me apart, that it may make some of her family happy. Please pick up all of my things. Gabby hated people who litter. That's it. Brian Laundry. You guys tell me down below what you think of uh, this book, this notebook, his last words. Um, I would comment more, but I got to head out. Uh, it, it, I don't know. To me, it seems like he tried to make himself as like he was trying to help her out. Do you buy this story? Um, and that he tried to save her and do what was best for her. And then he's trying to make it seem like he's kind of sympathetic towards the families. And that is, I guess the reconciliation would be the animals eating him instead of like turning himself in and said he wasn't afraid of like punishment that he was just doing it because he couldn't live without her, even though he's the one that killed her. Like these people never make sense. And then if you even think about the, um, the autopsy, right? The autopsy said manual strangulation. How do you fix that into that story? Manual strangulation, right? I, I guess he's claiming that's the way he decided to end her. Manual strangulation doesn't seem like a pity thing to me. It seems like very personal. It's very, I mean, you're, I don't need to go into the details, but you know, like just you're squeezing the life out of that person, probably looking at them or whatever. It's like, I would think it's done out of anger. Maybe the fights we've seen all the stories, the restaurant outburst that he had, I think it was a day before probably, you know, um, was this really just a pity thing? And he's just this, you know, hero of trying to save her and mistakes happen. And then he couldn't stand to live without her comment down below. There's a lot of people out there somehow that still think this guy's alive. I don't know if that puts that to rest for these people, or do they think that this was like planted by the government and it's like all a conspiracy Comment down below. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. And sorry about the previous video. I posted that video and literally one minute later, they released all eight pages. Thank you to Brian Enton and News Nation and Peace. Take care.